Hello. Thank you so much for joining me for this yoga session. Hope you are staying safe and well. Make sure you've got all the things that you need to help keep you comfortable and supported during this practice. Uh, a yoga mat, you don't really need a yoga mat, but you definitely need, need as much room as a yoga mat. A blanket for cushion, and I've got some blocks in order to help lift and support. So find that comfortable seat and let yourself settle in on your breath, taking time to unhook from all that's going on in the world, all that's going on with your self, and just be with your breath, paying attention to that breath as it comes in and out of your body, staying connected to the process of inhaling and filling up your lungs, and then exhaling and releasing your lungs. Let the breath get as full and deep as feels good to you and you're breathing any way that feels good, whether it be through your nose or your mouth or a combination of your nose and mouth. Your breath is your life force. Without your breath, there would be no you. And we take the breath for granted, but it is so important to reconnect to your breath, to the present moment, to yourself, your true, authentic and natural state. And in that true, authentic and natural state, you are home in yourself and you find yourself well, and happy, peaceful and at ease and you dwell in that natural state you're listening to what your body is saying to you what your intuition is saying to you you're trusting yourself to know that you will always work in your own best interests. You fill up on your next inhale. Let that three-part yoga breath start if it hasn't already. If you, When you fill up the lower third, press your navel into the space in front of you. And then the middle third, feel those ribs move up and apart. And then the breath goes into the upper third. Feel that heart move up in your chest. And then you exhale, heart and chest release, ribs move down and together. And then pull that navel back and up into your body. And then the inhale happens again. And you press the navel into that space in front of you. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Imagine just filling up right there in your whole trunk with that breath. Not only does your organs move, <coughs> excuse me, to the front of your body, but they also move to the side and the back. So even though I only brought your awareness to the front, imagine three-dimensionally those lungs filling up. Not only the navel pressing, but maybe a little bit in the low back and the sides, feel those ribs move, not just the front, but the back and the sides. And then when that heart lifts in that chest, feel those blades gently tuck down in together. And let that breath help to keep you anchored in your present moment, in the present moment, in yourself, attached to your true, natural, authentic state. And you practice kindness, compassion, and love with yourself. On your next inhale, press down 
into your mat. Feel that connection to the floor, the building, the ground, the buildings built into, and then the world that connects us all. So think about engagement or actively press down, a squeeze to your glutes, press your knees away, flex your feet, and feel that support come from within you as you engage to get that anchor, to get that grounding. So think navel in the front, dimples in the back, pressing down for support. And then navel, dimples up, lift yourself right up out of that place of support. So now engaging the upper girdle, your heart lifts into that space around you and it stays lifted as you keep those blades gently tucked in. They're not squeezed together, but they are definitely engaged. You're aware of your front body, heart and navel, and you're aware of your back body, blades and dimples. Lifting your head right up out of that trunk. There might be a gentle pressure on the tops of your shoulders that helps to lengthen that space at your neck. You're only adding the engagement that feels good to you. And still you're breathing full and deep, filling up that three-part yoga breath. And so this is letting your lungs get as much space as they can, you know, they need in order to really fill up. You're not constricting. You're keeping everything lifted and separated in order for it to work and move at its maximum. And I encourage you to try to keep engaging that way through the session. I will keep bringing your awareness to pressing down to connect and then also lifting with your whole self to take up that space. You can always do both and you should be doing both. I encourage you to do both. Hands can make your way to your heart and take a moment to bow and set an intention to yourself for your yoga practice, something that you're working on in your life that you'd like to bring in more or maybe to release. Only you really know what is best for you at any given time. And I'd also ask you to tack on gratefulness if it wasn't what you were looking for, just to be grateful to yourself for showing up for your practice. And then we're going to inhale, lift those arms up above your head, bring the palms of the hands together, bring them into your heart center. We're going to do this a couple times. Your eyes don't have to be open. You could be looking up or lifting your chin up to the sky if you wanted to, just depending on how your neck feels. We're going to do this a few times. Breathing full and deep. Keep that girdle engaged, inhaling and exhaling. And then you're going to pause. Hands can rest at your heart or down at your legs, letting yourself breathe full and deep. And then we're going to start moving. We're going to unwind from that seated position. Let those windshield wipers start to happen. Remember, you're not putting all your weight on your limbs, on your arms. You're keeping yourself lifted in your trunk as you drop those knees side to side. You're in charge of how close or how far apart they are to you and to each other. Inhaling and exhaling, breathing full and deep. And then let those legs extend down. We're going to get that nice stretch down the back of those legs. It doesn't have to be um, with super straight legs. In fact, <clears throat> the more bend you have in them, the more you're protecting your body. And also it helps you if you keep those knees bent, kneecaps pulled up to your thighs and press in with your heels, press in with your sitting bones. You keep that nice um, engaged back and spine and trunk in order to help keep you lifted up out of your lower body. And then we're going to start some rows. And if you don't like the reach wide, there's always the reach up. And of course, if you don't want either one of those, you can leave your hands down and you can just let yourself 
reach a little bit. This doesn't have to be all the way to your legs. In fact, it's still pretty early. It might not feel ready to come all the way to your legs, but try to keep those legs engaged and keep lifting yourself up. So I'm so much more concerned with you engaging your whole body than trying to bring your body together, if that makes sense. Like everyone thinks that yoga is all this bendy stuff and it is, but it's so much more. All right, here's where we're gonna pause. See, I don't have my whole body close to my legs. I really am engaging. I am getting this wonderful stretch um, down my glutes and low back and I'm lifting that heart pulling those shoulders out of those ears, keeping that torso nice and long. There's a hinge going on in the hips and you're breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. If you have come really far, you might need to lift up. Your right hand is gonna come anywhere on that left leg and then think about trying to keep your navel looking in the same direction as your Feet, like right between your feet, but then lift and rotate your heart open. Keep those shoulders out of your ears. You are still breathing fully. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Don't lose that engagement in your legs if you've got it. Doesn't have to be very much. You're going to unwind. Remember, you might not want to be too far forward. Left hand comes anywhere on that right leg, can be right up at the knee or the thigh. Keep pointing the navel between the toes, and then you are lifting that upper girdle, that heart, and those blades are now rotating to the right as you open up. Inhale and exhale. And then you're going to release, let yourself let that engagement go. We're going to bend those knees again. Windshield wipering back and forth. Notice how you feel. Come back to that just gentle, easy pose and notice how you feel breathing full and deep having one foot in front of the other. Your legs don't have to be super close to you. They can be spread out a little bit from your body and that actually provides a wider base. And so pay attention to what sort of base you need. So the knees are going out to each side. We're gonna turn them so they're both going left. And so that's gonna be the right knee is gonna come down and you're gonna have the, the knees going towards the left and then make sure that you're not stacking that right knee on top of that left foot and you are staying upright you're trying to bring that right glute down towards the the mat it probably won't touch there might be still a little bit of space but you want to have that sensation of pressing down and then you are going to start to thump That leg, that back right leg, I'm calling it the back, though it's not really the back, but you know what I mean, You're, that right leg, can you see how I'm thumping it on the ground? This is getting that fascia moved around. You're not putting any weight on your limbs. I really want you to stay upright with yourself. There's also this oblique engagement right here and hip engagement. Let it thump a couple more times. Let that foot be heavy. And then you're going to let that thumping go. You're going to bring that right leg back into that position we were just in. And notice if it feels like that hip is a little bit more open, if um, there's a little bit more space, if you can feel energy moving around. I do. I hope you do as well. And so make sure, once again, always setting yourself up for the most successful that you can be and learning what works for you. You're going to let those knees go to the right. I, really, you know, I want you to feel that right glute in the ground. You're trying to bring that left glute down. Um, it's engaged. That right foot, left knee, not on top of each other. And I could have showed you this, but I could also have a block here. This is a great place. You don't put a lot of weight. It's just here for a little leverage as you start that thumping on the left side. 
inhaling and exhaling. It's kind of, when I talk, it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like I'm speaking into a fan, breathing full and deep. Let that leg thump. And if you don't like this, you don't have to do it, of course. It's just a little thing. But I think it feels amazing. All right, you can let that go. You're going to bring that left leg back into that place in front of your body and just let yourself be for a couple breaths, noticing how you feel, feeling the energy move in your body, feel the openness. Hopefully things are starting to shift. You're feeling different than you did when you started. Pay attention. Keep showing up with kindness, compassion, and love. Stay with yourself and the present moment as we move. And it will just be um, that much more enjoyable, I believe. All right, let yourself come around onto your hands and knees. Take your time um, coming into that child position. And I've got a blanket down in order to keep my knees nice and supported. And it's one of those things you should always be setting yourself up for as much support and comfort as you want or need. The child can be very active pose as well as a very, very, very relaxed pose. To make it active, you can keep those especially that upper girdle engaged, pull it, the arms are reaching forward, pull those shoulders down out of your ears, really try to pull those blades apart. They're still pulling together and tucking in, but they're not squeezing together. Inhaling and exhaling. Keep trying to pull your tail down here and trying to pull your navel up to your heart and feel that engagement to get that stretch. Down in that lower girdle, breathing full and deep. And then lift yourself up a little bit. Make sure, If you don't have your arms coming forward, bring your arms forward. It's only so you can let that right arm travel underneath that um, left arm. And you're going to settle down in a, uh, I call it twisted child, but you're not really twisting very much. Because this is more of a shoulder opener. I would, it, I am directing you not to twist open, even though I just called it Twisted Child. But try to keep your heart, your shoulders, and your navel looking down towards or squaring with the mat as you reach that right arm and you're engaging that shoulder. Make sure you're being careful with your head and your neck. And then you're going to lift up, same thing, other side, breathing full and deep. Let your breath help to open up where you might feel stuck energy. And then you're going to bring yourself back to rest completely. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're taking drinks as you need them. Stay with your breath. Also, you might need to take layers off. So remember, you're always in charge of your practice. So even if I'm not saying come into child and you uh, need to come into child, please come into child. So coming back into that stable table, bring those hands right underneath those shoulders. Have those knees right underneath those hips. You're engaging that lower back. So do a little couple tilts, that pelvic tilt, and then pull that low back in that place. And then you're engaging that upper back. So you're pulling those blades together and then pulling apart and then finding yourself in that place of support, not locking out your elbows, staying lifted up off those limbs. And then start that cat and cow with the uh, epicenter being more in the middle back inhaling and exhaling and of course you're not just moving your back body you're moving your front body and your side body or you're moving your whole body everything is always connected and we're just not reinforced enough with all of that as we move through life and it's not until people come to yoga that they really start to get it oh yeah it isn't you know my ankle hurts but it's because of a hip thing or right it's like my wrist hurts it's because my shoulders got this thing and i have to hold my wrist in this funny way so it's one of those things everything is connected 
I love that actually, personally. Breathing full and deep. Stay with a couple more cat and cows, and then you're gonna pause in your neutral position. Make sure you've got that nice and strong back. There's no sway in the low back. And um, I had a, you know, you've probably heard where you could serve like tea or you could have lunch there if and it, the back is so stable and supported. That's what you're looking for. So to start with, you're gonna send those right legs back, but keep those toes on the ground and keep those hips nice and square. Try to keep that navel and that heart square to the mat. And then keeping those shoulders in that same plane, just let that left arm then reach forward. And so you're pressing down evenly between right, left arm, and you're also pressing down evenly between left knee and right toes. Can you find that place of engagement? Um, it's like you're trying to stretch the mat yourself. Hopefully your mat's a little bit uh, sticky so you can engage that way. And then only um, if it feels good to you to reach both off the ground, do. If you're like, I'm going to leave my leg down and just reach my arm off, that's totally fine. Or do it one at a time. Try to keep that navel, that heart, your face square to the mat. That includes the clock, nine and three, right? Your navel is 12, your pubic bone is six, and then your hip flexors are nine and three. And then there's corresponding clock on your backside, of course. And then you're gonna bring right leg down, left arm down. That's what I just led you. If you did the opposite, it's okay. Just remember, I want you to take a few breaths though in between for me, the rest is just as important as the work. I like to give equal time to both of those things. Uh, we are constantly, though it's not reinforcing us to really value rest uh, like we should. That's another thing that once you come to yoga, you start to feel and start to honor how the rest is just as important because what happens is, is we're tearing down and then that rest is when it gets built back up and you're doing a little mini tear downs and builds up all the time. And once again, all connected. All right. So now I'm going to send that left leg back. Remember I'm keeping that nine, three, uh, 12, everything, the clock, the, the chest, the face square, Keeping the shoulders, you're not reaching that arm forward. I want You are reaching that arm forward, but I want you to keep the shoulder engaged and find that place of evenness as you press through both arms evenly. And as you press through that left foot and then press down with that right leg, I guess it wouldn't just be the foot, it'd be the whole left leg because everything's happening from your trunk that's what's running the show inhale and exhale this is helping you see how you're the boss of your limbs all right let it go letting it reach finding that length inhale and exhale breathing full and deep always protecting that limb that you're staying on and then that, that you never hurt that joint never hyperextend. you're going to come back into that child and rest completely make sure that you are always resting back however feels good to you inhaling and exhaling staying with that breath staying with your body recognizing that it's always all about you inhale and exhale All right, hands underneath those shoulders, knees underneath those hips. Pay, pay attention to your engaging your trunk, you're engaging your girdles, and then lift yourself up into your downward dog, keeping that those girdles engaged. Keep those knees bent. Let yourself move as much or as little as feels good. Remember. You do not have to stay up in child if it's not serving you today. Playing around with 
coming up on those toes, but then settle onto the balls. And I really want you to find your balls. I really want you to find, try to bring your heels to the ground. They may or may not touch. Actually, I want you to find the balls of your hands and the balls of your feet. And I want you to find that evenness between those two places. And it's once again, that awareness and that sensation of evenness between your upper and lower body. Inhale and exhale, stay with your breath. Play around with coming into a three-legged dog if that would feel good, really stretching up and opening that hip. Keep trying to square your shoulders, your chest to the mat. Inhaling and exhaling, now your navel is lifting away from your heart. And then back into your just regular downward dog, you're going to decide how do I want to get to the front of my space? Do I want to drop down to hands and knees or do I want to walk up into that forward fold? And then when you get to that forward fold, using whatever support you have or need, you are finding that place of um, support and that engagement, pressing through the balls and heels going back and forth between both of them to find that place in between both of them that you are balancing and lifting yourself up out of. Keep those knees really bent. Really try to find that hinge at your hips to keep that low back nice and long so it gives that low back a vacation. So everything's happening in those glutes. All right, eventually you're going to be done with that. Keep with the movement, with the stretch. Keep those knees bent. Still stay with that place of um, support. You're going to inhale halfway into that flat back. Your hands can be wherever. Exhale for the toes. Inhale, lift into that flat back. Exhale for the toes. The next time we come up, you can reach up into that reverse swan dive unless you will feel a little dizzy and come up through this chair position. Doesn't matter if you reach into a back bend or not. It's totally up to you. You're in charge. Make sure you're always protecting yourself and find yourself in your mountain, pressing down with your whole self, lifting up with your whole self. Find that connection to the balls, heels, lift all 10 toes. Spread them wide, bring them down one piggy at a time for a gentle grip on the mat. And then those kneecaps come up into those thighs and then those thighs plug right into your sockets, right underneath, right your trunk. That lower girdle engages in order for those legs to be active. So that's the tail and the glutes coming down and activating, you are definitely engaging them, but you are not squeezing them to death and they are not the only thing that's doing the work because it's also the framework. So feel those hip flexors engage, navel, dimples down, solid base, and then navel, dimples up, lift yourself, feel yourself stretch up out of that solid base, lifting that heart up in that rib cage, pull those blades gently down, and tuck them in, they are not squeezing either. They are engaged, but not doing all the work. And then you are lifting the crown of your head up towards the sky, so your head just floats right over your shoulders. So think about trying to get your ears over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, and then your feet are pointing the 10 toes are pointing in the same direction and you feel evenness between the balls and the heels. And you can also do this little, I'm doing this. I'm, it might look like I'm, I mean, I am moving my hips, but it's starting because I'm doing it at my feet. So play around with that, but make sure you do not hurt any of your joints. All right. Stay connected to your breath, stay connected to your navel. Try to feel yourself moving. That's your epicenter is right there in your navel, right behind your navel in front of your tail. That is your center and you are moving from that place. So hopefully you can feel yourself shooting out of that place all around you, taking up all the space that you are supposed to take up and maintain that awareness as we move 
in some sun salutations, re reaching into as much of a back bend as feels good. You're always in charge. Exhaling, swan diving into your forward fold. Inhale, lift up, halfway, flat back. Exhale, down to the forward fold to step back to the plank, the knee down plank or the table. You're in charge of how you release down to the belly. Keep those Backs engaged as you inhale and lift to your version of Cobra. It doesn't have to be very high unless you're wanting to come high. You're always in charge. And then lift into your downward dog or press just back into child. Inhaling and exhaling. And then take your time. You're moving however feels good to you up to that forward fold. Make sure you feel solid halfway, flat back. Exhale for the toes. Inhale up above your head. Find that length. Stretch, but make sure you're stretching from the center. Exhale. Come towards that forward fold. Lift halfway, flat back. Back down to step back. Plank, knee down plank or table. Keep those whole bodies engaged as you reach into your cobra. And then back into your downward dog, however you choose to get there, breathing full and deep. You're always supporting your elbows. You're never hyperextending. You're always trying to find your balls. And you're moving to the front of your space, coming into that forward fold. Lift halfway into that flat back. Exhale down. For the toes, inhale up above your head. We're going to go through it one more time. Find that length. Exhale. Keep those girdles engaged as you hinge. Keep pulling those kneecaps up into your thighs. Lift up halfway, flat back, and then step back, plank, knee down, plank, or table. Bear your weight. Keep the girdles engaged as you lift into your cobra or your um, baby cobra. And then once again, pulling up into your downward dog or going right to child. If you did pull to that downward dog, just take two or three big, full, deep breaths here. And then let yourself come down into your child, resting completely. Make sure that you are getting the hydration you need. Always taking a moment to get a drink if you need it whenever. Breathing full and deep. Stay with your breath. Stay with your body. Hopefully you feel a lot of energy and stuff going on and you are staying kind and compassionate and loving with yourself no matter what is coming up. And the more you can become tolerant, especially with the stuff that comes up in your own head, really, I mean, it's just, it, it's inner peace. You get inner peace. Once you become tolerant of, right, the pet peeves that you're taught to have your whole life, once you become tolerant of that, what happens in the space, in the void? Peace. Inner peace. It's amazing. And it you can get there if you practice. So keep practicing. Inhaling and exhaling. We're going to come into a little warrior series. You're going to decide how you want to start that warrior series, whether you lift yourself into a downward dog and pull that right foot forward, or you just come through table, pull that right leg forward, and you come into that runner's lunge. I, I want you to find that place between that right and that left foot where it is even amount to you. Try to find it. And then there's this is a trifecta. The third part is you. So then you've got to bring awareness to your trunk and then bring your trunk up. You're always trying to keep those hips square. We're in that crescent lunge to start with. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathing full and deep. Those hands, if they're reaching up, bring them to your heart. And then you're going to let that right arm sneak behind you, left arm sneak in front, and then keep your navel pointing in the same direction as your knee. Let that heart lift and rotate to the right. Inhaling and exhaling. 
let yourself unwind. If it does not feel good to your body to bring that back right foot down so when we come into warrior one, then stay in the crescent. So we're gone. We've gone from crescent to warrior one. Now we're going to bring those arms and we're just going to reach for the elbows. I don't want you to strain. Keep trying to drag that left hip forward as you pull that right hip back and make sure that you are protecting your joints, pressing through those balls, and then let yourself come over that right leg in that humble warrior. Inhaling and exhaling, let your arms go, hands on either side of that right leg. Here's where you're gonna be careful. We're gonna, because we're gonna lift that left leg into the air. So you might need to step up and then let that, so you really get all the weight on that right leg. Use those blocks, bring that left leg up into that standing side split inhaling and exhaling and then this is where you need room um, off the side of your mat so make sure you're not right up against a wall we're going to come into a warrior three so we have gone from crescent to warrior one to side to standing side split to warrior three use whatever support you need and then very gently bend that right knee smear that left foot down, find your solid base and open into your warrior two, inhaling and exhaling. We're going to come into that side angle, breathing full and deep, pay attention to your navel and your heart, keep trying to lift it to the sky, blades and dimples, it's almost like there's an imaginary table behind you. Come into that reverse warrior. Inhale and exhale, take that left arm, gently reach for that right wrist, and you're, you're not just straightening your leg, right? You are lengthening through your trunk to get that leg long, and then let yourself travel into that triangle. Keep trying to lift the heart and the navel to the sky. Imagine there's an imaginary table. Imagine there's an imaginary table. <laughs> I guess it's, that's redundant. Uh, there's a table behind you. Imagine that. And you're trying to just bring yourself right up on top of it. Inhale and exhale. I love the Warrior Series because it helps you really see how you're the boss of your legs and your limbs. All right. You're going to rotate yourself down now. Once again, squaring to the mat. I pop that left heel up. Now my feet are once again on railroad tracks. I'm even moving that right leg over a little bit more. So I've got room. And then you can step back. And if you want to press right to downward dog or go right to child, please do. But if you like that flow that we did a little bit earlier, that's always available. Inhale and exhale. Breathe full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully. Chest, ribs, navel. You can rest in child if you want before we move on to the other side. And take your time. And you don't have to come to this side like you did the other side. I mean, if you did downward dog and now you want to do table, I mean, it's totally cool. It's your practice. You are always trying to protect yourself, though, and it just whatever matters and works for you. So keep those hips square. Keep trying to squeeze like a squaring or a scissoring. Those sockets, um, you're trying to use the right glute and the left glute, the right hip flexor and the left hip flexor, trying to separate them, but how they work as a unit. All right, that left arm sneaks behind, that right arm sneaks in front. Keep that navel pointing towards that short edge of that left toe or that left knee, and then lift that heart and rotate it a little bit to the left. All right, hands come back. Here's where we smear down to come into that warrior one. And then we came into the humble warrior. Inhale and exhale. Let yourself bring that ooh, left elbow down to that left knee. I'm not left elbow, left shoulder down to that left knee. 
and then let your arms go. Your belly's right on the inside of that left thigh. Try to keep it there as you bring the weight into that left leg. That is where you get that standing split. The leg isn't just coming up, it is that right um, hip socket that is bringing that leg up. So it's your butt and your hip. And then we very, oh, we went into warrior three. Oh, I almost forgot. You are lengthening into warrior three. Use whatever support you need. That's why I love blocks because they're always right there underneath my shoulders in order to help me stay steady, to steady my hips. All right, we're gonna bring those left toes down, those left feet down. We smeared that left foot, keep that, or that right foot, right foot and back. Left knee bent, because we're on the left side now. Open to that warrior two. Sorry if I missed and messed it up, but you didn't get messed up. All right, we reached, once we felt steady, into that side angle. Take your time. It can be arm down on the block or it's just elbow, but you're not putting all your weight. Like try not to put all your weight. Try to really stay lifted. Keep lifting and rotating that navel and that heart in that same place up to the sky. And then up into the reverse, inhaling and exhaling. Keep those girdles engaged. Let that right hand gently clasp that left wrist. And then just for, just because it's kind of fun to get that stretch, you're gently pulling on that left arm as that left leg straightens, but it's all happening from your trunk. And because once again, this is your epicenter and I'm trying to get you to move from that place. And this triangle is a great exercise and stretch for you to see how it is. That's exactly where it's happening. It's you're pressing down and then you are reaching and rotating out of that place. It's just amazing to me how that feels. All right, take your time. Here's where we came down into that runner's lunge. I don't think we did any more because we got through the warrior series and we even tacked on triangle and standing split. Step back into your flank, plank, knee down plank, move through your flow if you would like. You can always just press right up into downward dog or go right to child. If you do make it to downward dog, take two or three big full deep breaths, really relishing how you feel, staying with your breath and then make your way down to your knees. Once again, resting completely in your child. Right, the mo it's equally important, the work we just did and now the rest in order to help integrate and repair. And they are both equally important, the work and the rest, the work and the rest and learn to value and honor both, especially in anything you do. Inhaling and exhaling, you know, recognize if you have like a high energy situation for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe a close call uh, at driving or something. And that gets your adrenaline going and you spend, you know, time up in that flight, fight or flight with all those chemicals going, recognize that if later in the day you are more emotional about something or just really tired, like it's, there's a good reason, right? Because you didn't, I mean, it's, you need to have a rest. You need to have a rest and you always need to have a rest. So whether you are intentionally doing that work or it is just happening because that's what happens, right? The things start going and if you stay with your breath and how you feel and your navel and what is true to you, which is that you are well and safe, uh, and if it's a matter of your own thoughts, just piling on and piling on and piling on, keep working with finding the space and be kind and gentle to yourself as you do that. All right, so you've rested in child for a bit. We're gonna come into that pigeon posture. If you prefer back or seated, Please do that. I am gonna lead regular pigeon, I guess it would be called. I'm gonna bring that right leg forward. I'm letting that left leg extend back. I've um, 
got my hands on blocks in order to help stay lifted. And then that left leg that's back behind me, I'm trying to drag it forward. It's almost like it is just, you know, it's like it's like it's hurt and I have to drag it with that hip. And I want you to feel that sensation as you move down towards your elbows. Now, if you are on your back, I want you to press both your glutes down towards the floor, but I want your butt to be heavy. If you're seated, you're engaging, right? Your whole, uh, your lower trunk, especially, and trying to um, press your knees down and you'll know it's not just your knees, right? Those knees are connected to your hips. Inhale and exhale, breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Stay with your breath. You're still moving from that center place. So try to keep your navel and your heart and your face square to the mat. Try to keep your nine and your three square. So if you've got your right leg forward, your... Uh, because 12 is your navel, six is your pubic bone, three is your right side, nine is your left side. So if you've got that right leg bent underneath you, it's typical that the nine is up high and you want to bring the nine down low to even up with the three. Is that making sense when I talk about that clock? Somebody just the other day told me that the clock is everything and I personally know the clock is everything too. So I'm going to talk about the clock and, you know, I'm so lucky. I'm glad that we haven't gotten rid of analog clocks for sure, because you know, obviously it's not a digital clock. <laughs> you all know that because you're smart. All right. Let yourself go through a release position, depending on which one you chose. Right. I gave you three different pigeons and hopefully if you're watching this, you're thinking, she's just saying the word pigeon over and over, like you were able to um, find some stretch with your hip. Press yourself back. Rest in the posture that feels best for you, whether it be child. If you're on your back, maybe your windshield wipering. If you're seated, you could potentially windshield wiper back and forth as well. Inhaling and exhaling. And then taking your time bringing yourself up and then moving to the other side. So it's all about keeping that trunk, right? All the magic's happening. Your clock is really what's, you know, doing the show here. And you then settle in and you're moving from that center place, stretching forward and back and over that left leg. And you're not, hopefully you're not, Dumping down on that left thigh because that would bring that three up higher anyway. Inhale and exhale. Breathe full and deep. Three-part yoga breath. The top of the, uh, the right foot. Feel that on the ground behind you if you're in this regular pigeon. Feel the top of your right knee, not the inside, not the outside. So there's all these little adjustments that you can be doing all the time in order for you to feel more comfortable and also to get the most out of the stretch. Inhaling and exhaling, stay with your breath. And then we're going to receive and rest on that side. You are doing whatever feels good. It doesn't have to look the same as the other side. It can be what works for your body. You're always the one in charge. Inhaling and exhaling. Find yours if you're on your back because you did pigeon that way. Stay there. If you were in that regular pigeon or that seated pigeon, you're going to come to your back, keep those knees bent, windshield wiper back and forth. Try to keep bringing that, right? Try to get your clock 12, 6, 9, and 3, even keep trying to bring your glutes down. Only if you can keep your glutes heavy and down do you bring your feet up because that helps to protect your low back because if you don't do that, it could hurt your low back. And I don't want you to have pain 
in your low back. And this yoga is a great teacher of what is pain and what is just intense sensation. And becoming intimate with both is definitely uh, a wonderful thing. All right. Try to keep those shoulders down on the ground, those shoulder blades engaged, the parts of your arm closest to the floor. Try to keep pressing them even closer. That collarbone is sliding apart and you're keeping your neck nice and long. Inhaling and exhaling. You're gonna stay with that sensation, bringing those feet down, hands by your side. Move through those pelvic tilts so you're moving that clock. You're lifting your lower girdle up about just a half inch off the floor so it's got room to move, right? You're doing this by pressing into those feet and lifting right there behind your navel in front of your tail to get that oscillation. And then that, it's like a hammock and pull yourself into that place of support and then start to pull yourself up and down in your bridge. So keep that girdle engaged, pause in your bridge, whether you roll those shoulders under or not is up to you. You can also keep lowering and lifting if that's what would feel good to you, inhaling and exhaling, and then lower down one vertebrae at a time, keep pulling that tail, that's when you release, rock, circle, whatever feels good to you. Inhale and exhale. Stay with your breath. Stay with your body and how it feels, always protecting yourself. Arms come out to a T. Whether your feet are on the ground or not is up to you. Those arms are out to a T, not above your shoulders, palms up or palms down. And then pay attention to your nine and three, and then bring awareness to your shoulders and your shoulder blades. And I want you to try to keep your nine and three and your shoulder blades connected as you drop those knees over to the left and then look towards your right hand. Inhale and exhale. So you only that right hip might come up a little bit. I want you to keep trying to bring it down. You're trying to basically um, pull yourself there in the center. All right, let yourself come through neutral and it's all about the other side. Inhaling and exhaling. And if you don't wanna look in the opposite direction of your knees, you're really looking in any direction that feels good to you. You are always the boss. Inhaling and exhaling, coming back through center. Here's where you do a few more rocks and circles. Happy baby can feel really good here, but once again, keep those glutes heavy. You are pressing through those glutes in order to find that length in your trunk. You are not straining your elbows or your shoulders to reach towards your legs or your feet. You're definitely not straining to get towards your feet because you can always gently clasp and as a gentle clasp behind those thighs because you've got so much stuff going on back here. You want to be careful with those tendons and then you move however feels good to you. Maybe you want a different kind of twist. Maybe you want to do a heart opener. You have got a few moments to do that. We're going to settle then into Shavasana relaxation. Make sure you've got um, your layers near you or on in order to completely support you in the last, excuse me, in the last posture. And you are going to try to relax. Hopefully you've got time where no one's going to bother you and you have got quiet and you can sit and be or lay and be in relaxation and of course you can also i did say sit you can sit in meditation which is what i'm going to do while you're in relaxation so please let yourself completely relax i will not let you be late for your next thing i will wake you and uh, send you on your way. So 
Let yourself settle in, get comfortable, cover up. Start to bring your awareness to your breath, that breath moving in your body, stay connected to yourself, the present moment, recognize that that natural state, that true authentic self is where you want to dwell, feeling safe and happy, peaceful and at ease. Hopefully you'll come to that, or at least it's, you felt it fleetingly. Try to maintain that as you start to move with a little twitch of your fingers and your toes, that general circling of your wrists and ankles, and then the bend of your knees and elbows. And only lift those feet up off the floor. Once again, if your glutes, your, your trunk is, your lower girdle is engaged, your trunk is engaged to help protect that low back. Rock and circle there on your back a few breaths and then roll to one side and rest in that fetal-like position, that very first position you were ever in. And once again, return to the intention you set and take it with you off the mat, this idea of being grateful, grateful to yourself for treating yourself to yoga and grateful to yourself for being born. And press yourself up into that upright seated position, finding that comfortable seat, keeping your eyes closed or open. Your hands can make their way to your heart namaste thank you so much for joining me please keep taking care keep staying staying safe bye